I'm bringing the party to you. Five. Four. We're on a mission from God. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. I'm here. With John Leonetti. That broadcast school has really paid off. Deacon Mark Campbell. Yeah! Mark Amadeo. Ooh, yeah! And Deacon Tony Valdez. Well, good morning. Welcome into the Catholic Morning Show. Deacon Mark Campbell, grateful to be with you today, along with Matt Wilkham and Brady Graham as we... Uh, Round out this week, the 14th week in Ordinary Time. We've got a great show in store for you today. Here in the first half hour, we have um, Mary Jane Zuzalo unveiling the sixth station of the cross. And the sixth station of the cross, if uh, you need just a quick refresher, is the wiping of Jesus' face. Uh, uh, St. Veronica, her feast day, is, is one of those saints that we celebrate today. Mary Jane is... Um, she is the great, great, great niece of Sister Mary or Marie de Saint Pierre. And she's a French Carmelite who re- received the approved apparitions from Christ to initiate the Holy Face devotion. And uh, th- this new book, I think, is some are calling it the mother of all devotions. So we're going to look forward to that conversation here in the first half hour of the show. Coming up in the second half hour, we'll have our Dowling Catholic High School Activity Spotlight. And uh, one I've been looking forward to since, uh, you know, it was made known to us here at the station. But today we are going to introduce you to Coach Andre Meeks. And this past year, uh, along with being an assistant football coach at Dallin Catholic High School, he was voted by the students to be the uh, teacher of the year. So that's an exciting honor. But he's accomplished that and a whole lot more. And uh, we'll have that conversation. And, of course, we thank... Um, Bright Side Aesthetics by Ducharme Dermatology for sponsoring this mug- monthly segment of Dallin Catholic High School uh, activities. And we'll have Gene Till in to give us a preview of Bishop Jones's show, making it personal. We'll have our saint of the day and, of course, news, weather, and sports. But before we go further, let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, we offer you our day. We offer you all our thoughts, words, joys, and sufferings in union with the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our guide and strength today so that we may be a witness to your love. Mary, Mother of Jesus and the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, protect us. Amen. Let's take a look now at news that's making headlines. Good morning, Matt. Thank you, Deacon Mark. News brought to you this morning by Bozen the Florist. Learn more at bozen.com. Good morning. I'm Matt Wilkham. President Biden is scheduled to attend a campaign event in Detroit today. His appearance comes after a solo press conference yesterday, his first since last month's debate with rival Donald Trump. The press conference was seen as a high-stakes event for the president as he faces increasing calls from fellow Democrats to drop his re-election bid. We'll see if he can get everybody's name correct today. (laughs) Firefighters extinguished a fire that broke out on Thursday on the spire of Rouen Cathedral, a historic Gothic church in northern France. The French Ministry of Culture indicated the fire was caused by mishandling by workers as the part of the spire where the fire broke out is currently undergoing renovation. The fire in Rouen also occurs against the backdrop of concerns about the Catholic heritage of France. It is estimated that one religious building is lost in France every two weeks due to various factors, including demolition, repurposing, or destruction. This weekend, Central Iowa will host the USSSA Midwest National Fast Pitch Pitch Championship. (laughs) Say that that three times fast. Right, fast (laughs) pitch. Tournament games will be held in various locations, including Ankeny, Norwalk, and West Des Moines. The competition for ages 8 to 16 will run from Friday to Sunday. And now for your scoreboard update with Mark Amadeo. In sports on your Friday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, most of the Midwest Major League Baseball teams had the day off on Thursday. In interleague play, the Cubs shut out the Baltimore Orioles by the score of 8 to nothing. Cubs now have won six or last seven games, and they sweep the Orioles in a three-game series, the first time the Orioles have been swept at home since 2021. 
In the National League yesterday, the Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the first place Milwaukee Brewers by the score of one to nothing. Tonight, in interleague play, Pittsburgh Pirates are at the Chicago White Sox. First pitch, 7 o'clock in Chicago. While the Minnesota Twins travel to the West Coast and take on the San Francisco Giants tonight. First pitch, 9-15. In the National League, the Washington Nationals are at the Milwaukee Brewers this weekend. First pitch tonight at 7 o'clock. In St. Louis, the Cardinals are hosting the Cubs this weekend. First pitch tonight, 7-15 in St. Louis. And in the American League, the Kansas City Royals are at the Boston Red Sox this weekend. First pitch tonight, 6 o'clock in Boston, Massachusetts. These are the final Major League Baseball games before next week's All-Star break, which is Tuesday night in Arlington, Texas. Last night, Triple-A baseball was game three of the Iowa Cubs series at Nashville, and it was Nashville defeating the Iowa Cubs by the score of 10 to 4. Tonight, game four of their series, Iowa Cubs at the Nashville Sounds, the Triple-A affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers. First pitch tonight, 6.30 in Nashville, Tennessee. Tonight, high school playoff baseball on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. It's a Class 4A substate first round game. It'll be Dowling Catholic with a record of 20 and 15, hosting Ames with a record of 24 and 15. Joe Stacy with the call tonight here on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. Pre-game just before 7 o'clock from George Cadero Field on the campus of Dowling Catholic High School in West Des Moines. The winner of tonight's game between Ames and Dowling will play the winner of Fort Dodge and Roosevelt on Monday night. And with your Friday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And now let's go to Brady with our forecast. What's it going to look like here this weekend, Brady? Yeah, thank you, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Weather today is brought to you by Confluence Brewing. You can learn more at confluencebrewing.com. For today, we're looking at sunny skies, high near 87 degrees tonight, partly cloudy conditions with a low around 71. And then moving into your weekend on Saturday, sunny skies, high near 92. And those heat index values are looking a little better. They were at 105, but right now... The National Weather Service has them at 100 degrees for a heat in- index value. So, oh, that's so a much bit better. better. So I know. much better, Brady. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wow. people should be able to tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> Currently in Des Moines, 69 degrees. Ames and Marshalltown, 64. Fairfield, 65 degrees. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, Deacon Mark and Matt. Thank you, Brady. And this Sunday, the 15th Sunday at Ordinary Time, We continue our uh, walk through the Gospel of Mark, and this weekend, Jesus is going to be sending uh, those who are following him. He's going to be sending them out two by two, and to give us a little bit of insight into into this Gospel passage, we welcome into the show Father Adam Westfall, pastor of St. Thomas Aquinas in Indianola. Good morning, Father. Good morning, uh, Mark and Matt. Thank you for the uh, introduction there, yeah, and the opportunity to come on the show today. Yeah, well, it's uh, you and I crossed paths here recently, and when uh, we had a little change in our own schedule here, and, and thought, well, who could pinch hit and, and do a, 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 a at least an okay job? I thought <laughs> none other than uh, than you, Father Adam. No, it's uh, this. This is, a, I think, a, an exciting passage for many of us, especially those who can be bogged down in the. Uh, in in our evangelization efforts and feel like we're all alone, but we're, we're most certainly not, right? Right, absolutely not. No, I thank you for the uh, for the opportunity. And, and the, the passage that we have this weekend is actually a, a continuation. Um, it, it's, bare, it's it's a similar passage that's been read throughout the week, and so we've been reflecting on this idea of Christ sending out his uh, disciples uh, to do mission for him, to extend the, the kingdom of God. You know, to become essentially his witnesses in the world around through the power of his spirit. And so it's kind of a, it's a insight. Um, it's a gift for all of us as we are called to be sent out. I, we've been reflecting on this, of course, as a diocese for the last um, month, especially uh, two months, especially as Bishop has launched his new mission and vision, visioning uh, initiative, you know, sowing God's spirit, cultivating connections in Christ, uh, where he's encouraging us to actually go out and do um, the work of the gospel, spreading the good news going out. The gospel today kind of gives us an insight of how we do that. You know, we have to um, basically go out poor, uh, go out begging God for every gift to come from heaven that we need, and He always provides. And so the Spirit will come, um, you know, and reading the gospel that the, those that were sent out, they were sent out with virtually nothing, you know, no money bag, you know, not a second tunic. They could wear, they could wear shoes, though. That was, they were given that concession. Um, but they were sent out with nothing except for the power of the Spirit. 
and that really really kept them humble since they were focused on the the good things of God. You know, if we have a lot of um, earthly things around us as we're trying to do heavenly things, uh, we get uh, comfortable. We end up not being successful in the mission. Well, in this passage here, the, uh, we see that those disciples are, are able to do great things. And so uh, what, are, you know, what are some of the ways or what are some of the things that we can be introspective in, in uh, stripping away the things in our, in our life so we can have this, this ultimate reliance upon God as we, as we share the gospel? Yeah, I think it's um, it's different for each individual. Uh, it's it's something that each in, each person has to reflect upon themselves. Like, what are they attached to that they have to give up? Um, you know, we as a, we as individuals, we each tend to have our own weaknesses and our and the strengths that God has given us. Um, and Satan Satan knows our weaknesses, and so he tries to continually exploit them, getting us to fall into them. And we, as as um, disciples of Christ and the power of the Spirit, we we rebuke Satan. You know, by continually. Um, allowing God to strengthen us in our weakness and uh, overcome those weaknesses with the power of His grace, whatever they may be. I mean, there's so many that we could talk about as possible examples that would go on for hours, but, right. um, you know, for each individual, uh, the question you just have to ask yourself is, what am I attached to that's earthly that I have to give up in order to do the, the work of heaven? And finally, the, uh, th- this idea of shaking the dust off uh, our feet, for those who do not do not receive us, what is what is what is the real message here for uh, for us this weekend? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know that I've thought about it um, overly much on that particular issue. I would imagine that uh, as a disciple is leaving an area that's been not receptive to the gospel, not receptive to the power of heaven, um, they don't want to take anything from that situation that would in turn hurt their own faith. You know, so. Uh, Leave it behind completely. Leave behind that situation, the, fail, the, the supposed failure. Leave it behind. Move on into the future because you've got another mission ahead of you. Exactly. Uh, don't let the, the discouragement from before um, affect how you minister in the future. Yeah, I think that that's uh, that, that, that's great encouragement for all of us because I think sometimes we get into that that place where we're kind of banging our head against the wall or we become a resounding gong. And uh, the message is there. If, if somebody's not ready to receive it, then you might as well save your breath. Right and and go to someone who is willing to uh, uh, to to embrace the the message of the gospel. Father, would you give us our, our blessing as we uh, head into this weekend? I would be happy to. Loving and gracious Father, we come before you humbly, asking for your gifts to shower down from heaven uh, and enrich our hearts with the many treasuries of your grace. We ask you to guide our listeners and those who follow you um, in the ways of the the, the pathway of heaven and in the things of God. And may the blessing of Almighty God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and everyone listening um, here today. Amen. Thank you. Father Adam Westfall from St. Thomas Aquinas in Indianola. Thanks for making time for us this morning on Short Notice. Absolutely. We'll My talk pleasure. To you. Have a good one. Yes, we'll talk to you again soon. And coming up after a short break, Mary Jane Zuzalo, and we're going to be talking about unveiling the sixth station of the cross, reparation to the holy face. Uh, as some have said, but the mother of all devotions. This is a this is a book that has some weight to it. Uh, I believe over three hundred pages. But uh, we're going to get an insight to this book with the author right after this. Don't go anywhere. It is the Catholic Morning Show. I'm Deacon Mark Campbell. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at fastsigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming provided by Modus Maryland, offering a wide selection of clothing for a baptism, first communion, quinceanera, wedding, or any special occasion, as well as accessories and jewelry. 4120 Southeast 14th Street in Des Moines and online modusmaryland.com. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from A New Look Exteriors, an Anderson certified contractor providing custom window installations, roofing, siding, gutters, concrete, and more to help give your home a new look. Learn more at anewlookexteriors.com. At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy 
pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at InterVisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Bozen the Florist. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, weddings, whatever the message, say more with Bozen. Bozen.com, 515-244-ROSE. Bozen makes the moment mean more. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Dino Storage, 2725 2nd Avenue in Des Moines, offering monthly rentals, indoor climate-controlled storage, and package delivery to your unit. Learn more at dinostorage.com. I'm Father Thomas Loya, and this week on Light of the East on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, we can have full confidence that a church whose dogmas came about from councils and not from a mere person is indeed the fullness of the body of Christ on earth. Light of the East, Sunday mornings at 1030 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for joining us this morning, everyone. Wherever you're tuning in to the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, across our eight, uh, what, five signals, three affiliates, online or through the Iowa Catholic Radio app, we're grateful that uh, you've joined us this morning. And make sure you're telling your friends and family where they can tune in to all the great programming heard all day long, both local and syndicated programming that uh, connects listeners to Christ and teaches and defends the Catholic faith. And here at Iowa Catholic Radio, we, key, we work to uh, communicate the truth in love, to be a, a voice for all things Catholic, and we're most certainly faithful to the magisterium of the church. Right now, we are going to go to uh, Mary Jane Zuzalo. Today is the, uh, it, it, well, not recognized in the Roman martyr, martyrology. Uh, St. Veronica of the Vale is recognized today. Of course, we know her from the Sixth Station of the Cross. And to talk more about the uh, Sixth Station of the Cross and unveiling that for us in the devotion to the Holy Face of Jesus. Good morning. Good morning, Mary Jane. Good morning. Thank you for coming on the show today. And, and for our listeners, and for me, really, how old is this devotion to the holy face of Jesus? Well, you know, in some sense, we've always had devotion to the holy face of Jesus since, since his incarnation. Uh, and we've always had reparation to God in, in different ways. Ways you know, back in the Old Testament, uh, the face of God was mentioned uh, quite a bit, and and we also had reparation by the Israelites. But this devotion, uh, which combines both the the uh, reparation to God and the use of the holy face as an instrument in that, is unique, and that was approved by Pope Leo the Thirteenth in eighteen. 18- uh, 85 for the whole world immediately. So he broke with tradition in doing that. And what is your special connection to this uh, this devotion? Well, I just happen to be the great, or a great, great, great niece of Sister Marie de Saint Pierre. Uh, she was the young French Carmelite nun who received uh, approved revelations from Christ, private revelations in the 1840s to initiate the devotion. And, you know, this was a timely request by Christ, um, because it was just after the first French Revolution and leading into the second. And sadly, uh, France had sort of led the world in uh, new uh, offenses of blasphemy, offenses against the first three commandments, which outline the rights of God. And uh, so this, this was great offense. And Christ requested that this devotion be given as a modern um, means to call men back to proper love and reverence for him. And so, you know, sadly, we still have um, terrible blasphemy, and I would say uh, the, the devotion is more relevant in our times in many respects than it was even when first given to her at that time. And uh, was this lineage to uh, uh, Sister Marie, was that something that you grew up knowing, or was that something you discovered later in life? Uh, we did always know about it, mm-hmm. and we knew the very basics of the devotion, but uh, we were not aware of so many written materials um, and how 
uh, you know, just a, a flood of information that was available. Uh, we first kind of discovered that uh, when my grandfather passed away and we started to go through some of his things and um, realized there was all these books in French on the devotion. And, you know, through time we were able to, um, this was before the Internet, but we were able to find English versions of some of those. And and that really helped us understand more the depth of the devotion, which is really a, a a deep spirituality, and I think now we have the hindsight of uh, St. Therese of Lisieux, who had an enormous devotion to the Holy Face, and uh, a, a large part of the book I discuss um, how her spirituality and that of the devotion are so complementary, and uh, it, it really helps us in both directions. It helps us understand uh, the devotion better by her example, and, and I would say because this is not something that's been talked about since the 1950s, I think that to um, to regain this context of the importance of the the revelations in Saint Teresa's own uh, background, you know that helps us understand her spirituality better. Well, and it, 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 as you write here, it, it, it connects with the Mariology of Saint Louis de Montfort. Uh, it, it's consistent with the uh, you know the miracles of, of the. the Sanctuary of Our Lady of Lords. So there, there's definitely some, some, some substance to this devotion. Let's get into it. Talk about the devotion itself and, and how people can familiarize themselves with it. Okay, sure. It's, I, this may sound shocking, but I'm, I'm just paraphrasing Christ's own words. It's the greatest devotion to make reparation for the greatest evils. And again, those are uh, crimes stemming from offenses against the rights of God. They're uh, which prohibit blasphemy in all its forms. Um, Christ reveals that blasphemy wounds his heart more than any other offenses and and uh, renews the injuries to his face. And so to tie in with uh, St. Veronica, there's kind of a, a parallel here. You know, her act of consolation to Christ uh, resulted in uh, the recompense of his exact likeness being left upon her veil. Uh, that's why she's known as Veronica, uh, meaning true icon. And in the same way, our acts of reparation for these modern sins of blasphemy, uh, the, the recompense for us is the divine likeness being imprinted more and more upon our souls. And so the image of God in us is being uh, renewed. And so this is, this is an amazing promise, but just one of many amazing promises uh, linked to the devotion. But, um, you know, Christ said that iniquity has never reached such a degree. And so he was talking about, in his words, deep-rooted impiety and absolute incredulity. Um, in, in other words, man is either doubting or rejecting God's morality to the point of inventing his own. Um, and, you know, I think this sounds very familiar to us who are now, you know, we're, we have moral relativism in which, you know, people are deciding that they can create their own truth and morality and that everyone has their own individual version even. And then now wokeism is sort of an inversion of the truth and morality as uh, preserved in the doctrine of the faith and the moral law and the Ten Commandments. Um, and I think we can remember Isaiah's warning, woe to those who call good evil and evil good. Mm. And, uh, you know, communism is specifically called out in the revelations, even though the manifesto had not yet been published. Um, but, you know, it, it is overtly anti-God, um, and uh, that, that is a big reason that it, it was such a focus. Uh, uh, Christ kind of revealed that the... That communism and these other isms, modernism and uh, and so forth, you know, they're both an extreme offense to God and an allowed chastisement um, to call, to call us back again. Uh, you know, to gently call us back. Um, I think in in Psalm eighty one uh, says something to the effect, "I will let them walk in their own inventions." Mm. And um, so, you know, we're kind of a, a lot like the um, Israelites of the Old Testament. We're being very wayward, and the remedy is the same. The remedy is reparation, and so that's right. the good news. He gives us a way out. 
Well, the uh, we're talking with Mary Jane Zuzalo, and we're uh, unpacking a little bit her book, Unveiling the Sixth Station of the Cross, Reparation to the Holy Face, Mother of All Devotions. And uh, in these last couple of minutes, you know, the, the, the our faith is rich with devotions. But this one you say is very complementary to the devotion to the Sacred Heart and the Divine Mercy uh, devotions, as well as relates to the Holy Sacrament of the Altar. Talk about that a, a little bit. Okay, yes, it is um, it is very complimentary, and all are beautiful and very necessary and needed. Um, Christ uh, does reveal that this is most preferred by God because it is adoration and reparation to the Godhead itself. The, the face of Christ, uh, the wounded face of Christ, which is uh, linked to the devotion, the Veronica Vale uh, image there, uh, uh, that that one of the things it represents is the divinity itself. And so, uh, you know, other devotions uh, which are utilizing the sacred humanity of Christ, the wounds, blood, passion, etc., uh, they lead to that adoration and, and reparation to the Godhead. But this is already that. And uh, so it, it's very powerful. We're, we are utilizing in this devotion not our own merits and love, but the merits and love of Christ uh, as sort of encased in his face, being offered to the Father in reparation uh, to draw down mercy for the multitudes. Um, and, and yet, in, in his goodness, he also allows for our own transformation as well, for the devotees' own, um, own uh, transformation in, in their soul, in the likeness of God being imprinted upon them. Well, it says right there in, in Psalm 80, convert us, O God, and show us thy face, and we shall be saved. Uh, and, and this is also mentioned here in the book that uh, this is a, a pledge of mercy uh, fr- from God. Uh, Mary Jane, how can the um, how can our listeners get the book and uh, and learn learn more about your work? Yes. Okay. So uh, Sophia Institute Press is the publisher, uh, so you can go there. It's also available on all the other major bookstores, and um, my website is uh, holyfacedevotion.org. I also have a link there uh, to Sophia, uh, and uh, have a lot of other information that might be helpful. Perfect. The book is Unveiling the Sixth Station of the Cross, Reparation to the Holy Face, Mother of All Devotions. Mary Jane Zuzalo, thank you so much for making time and for uh, and, and putting this work out there so people can uh, make reparation and, and adopt this into their own spiritual life to uh, to grow in holiness and to, to please God and to, uh, to just t- tap into his ocean of mercy. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you again soon, folks. Let's go now to our gospel reflection for today, Friday, July uh, July 12th, the uh, 14th week in Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and, and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith, parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. One of the essential aspects of the Christian life is docility to the Holy Spirit, a willingness to obey the Holy Spirit's inspirations. This happens when we speak the words he wants us to speak to someone who is in need of them. We become docile to the Holy Spirit through a lifetime of calling upon his help, praying to the Holy Spirit before we take on an important or a difficult task, asking for the right words to speak to someone who is grieving or in some kind of difficult situation, speaking the truth in charity when it might be difficult to do so. This is how the Holy Spirit 
works. Sometimes we will also have to suffer for following Christ. The Holy Spirit is also with us in these times. The Holy Spirit, part of his job is to conform us more to Christ and to his passion. If we suffer for the sake of the name, we can have joy, just like the apostles did when they felt that they were found worthy to suffer for the sake of the name. They knew that they were worthy. They knew that they had been found worthy to suffer for the sake of the name. And so we will too, as disciples of the Lord at various times in our lives. We need not fear these times, but rather know that the Holy Spirit is that much more present, strengthening the faithful in their love for Christ. May God bless you and let us continue praying for each other. Iowa Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, I'm Johnette Williams from EWTN's Women of Grace. Thanks for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, an authorized independent agent for Walmart Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Learn more at 515-226-2111 or cindyschulte.com. Confluence Brewing Company, a former homebrewer's dream, is now a hub where great things come together. Situated south of Grays Lake and easily accessible via the bike trail in Des Moines. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Are you feeling called to serve as a permanent deacon, but wonder how they balance serving the church with their vocation to marriage, their family, and career? Men and their wives who may be discerning this radical service to the church are invited to attend the St. Lawrence Gathering, 2 p.m. Sunday, August 11th at St. John the Apostle Catholic Church in Norwalk for a great opportunity to speak with deacons about their vocation. For more information, email vocations at dmdiocese.org. That's vocations at dmdiocese.org. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Deacon Mark Campbell along with Matt Wilkham and Brady Grimm this morning. Soon to be joined by Andre Meeks. Dowling Catholic High School teacher, assistant football coach for our Dowling Catholic High School Activity Spotlight. Thank you again to Mary Jane Zuzalo for coming on to talk about her book, Unveiling the Sixth Station of the Cross, Reparation to the Holy Face, Mother of All Devotions. If you miss any interview, either on the Catholic Morning Show or one of our locally produced shows, you can find those at iowacatholicradio.com. Go to our podcast page, click on the show, and you can see all interviews right there. You can also share it with family and friends if you think they would be of uh, interest into what we're talking about here each and every day. Right now, let's continue our show with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's go now to news that's making headlines with Matt Welcome. Thank you, Deacon Mark. News brought to you this morning by Bozen the Florist. Learn more at bozen.com. Good morning. I'm Matt Wilkham. President Biden says he's the best qualified candidate for the job. During a rare solo press event Thursday that lasted nearly an hour, Biden said, quote, there are other people who could beat Trump, too, but it's awful hard to start from scratch. Did he say that in a normal voice or did he whisper it? I I, I don't know. You didn't watch it. (laughs) I didn't. I, this isn't eyewitness news. This is just... This I was is, occupied, but I was checking my news feed to see uh, what the God outcome of him. this press conference would be. Yeah. He made a couple of gaffes. Right. Uh, it, it, which is pretty much standard, it's right? It's typical. But, yeah. It's, it, it, but it, it always throws me when he breaks into his, uh, his whispering voice. <laughs> Matt, welcome. Continue with the news. All right. I'll try not to whisper. This is something that we should shout from the, the the rooftops here. Father Mike Schmitz's The Bible in 10 Minutes. 
has become the popular Catholic priest. Most That's a reflection of our culture. <laughs> yeah. Most of we, can't, we can't make it a year, but uh, maybe 10 minutes we can. Uh... <laughs> you don't have a year. Do you have 10 minutes? That's right. Got to uh, start somewhere. It's his most viral video yet, garnering over 358,000 views in its first 24 hours. Wow. Released on July 9th, the video was produced by Ascension and Coronation Media. Beginning with the creation of Adam and Eve, Schmitz outlines the Bible's story of salvation alongside vivid, colorful animations. The video also brings attention to Moses' flight out of Egypt, David's rule over Israel, and the passion of Jesus Christ, among other key moments. The Bible in 10 minutes more than doubles Schmitz's previous record of 160,000 views in one day with his 2023 video of the film Sound of Freedom, a review that is. Schmitz serves as the chaplain of, of U- the University of Minnesota Duluth, as well as the director of the Office of Youth Ministry for the Diocese of Duluth. Beginning January 15th, Iowa Catholic Radio began airing Schmitz's Bible in a Year and Catechism in a Year podcasts, which can be heard daily at 9 p.m. Central. In light of bird flu outbreaks in Iowa, the State Fair is canceling two events that involve dairy cows. The Milking Parlor and I Milked a, I Milked a Cow experience will be closed at this year's fair, which runs August 8th through the 18th. Both events involve direct contact with dairy cows and therefore carry a risk of spreading the disease. Dairy cows will still appear in the avenue of breeds, but with an extra testing requirement. Bird flu is a highly contagious disease that can kill entire flocks. Dairy cows infected with bird flu typically recover with supportive care. Boo. Mm. An astronaut, speaking of white things, <laughs> I'm thinking of Holsteins, you know, of course, That's right. the black and white. But uh, an astronaut milk. who... Who worked, right. That's right. Who worked, you know, the astronauts, they wear the, well, at least nowadays, uh, the, the, the white suit. Yes. Uh, worked, uh, who worked in the Apollo program and was one of the first space shuttle commanders is dead. Joe Engel, a retired Air Force Major General, died at his home in Houston Wednesday. He was 91. A Kansas native, Engel was the only astronaut to pilot the X-15 fighter jet and the space shuttle. Vanessa Weish, director at the NASA Johnson Space Center, said Engel's contributions to the advancement of human spaceflight will inspire generations of explorers for years to come. And now for your scoreboard update with Mark Amadeo. In sports on your Friday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, most of the Midwest Major League Baseball teams had the day off on Thursday. In interleague play, the Cubs shut out the Baltimore Orioles by the score of 8 to nothing. Cubs now have won six or last seven games, and they sweep the Orioles in a three-game series, the first time the Orioles have been swept at home since 2021. In the National League yesterday, the Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the first-place Milwaukee Brewers by the score of 1 to nothing. Tonight, in interleague play, Pittsburgh Pirates are at the Chicago White Sox. First pitch, 7 o'clock in Chicago. While the Minnesota Twins travel to the West Coast and take on the San Francisco Giants tonight, first pitch, 9-15. In the National League, the Washington Nationals are at the Milwaukee Brewers this weekend. First pitch tonight at 7 o'clock. In St. Louis, the Cardinals are hosting the Cubs this weekend. First pitch tonight, 7-15 in St. Louis. And in the American League, the Kansas City Royals are at the Boston Red Sox this weekend. First pitch tonight, 6 o'clock in Boston, Massachusetts. These are the final Major League Baseball games before next week's All-Star break, which is Tuesday night in Arlington, Texas. Last night, Triple-A baseball was game three of the Iowa Cubs series at Nashville, and it was Nashville defeating the Iowa Cubs by the score of 10 to 4. Tonight, game four of their series, Iowa Cubs at the Nashville Sounds, the Triple-A affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers. First pitch tonight, 6.30 in Nashville, Tennessee. Tonight, high school playoff baseball on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. It's a Class 4A sub-state first-round game. It'll be Dowling Catholic with a record of 20-15, and 15, hosting Ames with a record of 24-15. and 15. Joe Stacy with the call tonight here on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. Pre-game just before 7 o'clock from George Cadero Field on the campus of Dowling Catholic High School in West Des Moines. The winner of tonight's game between Ames and Dowling will play the winner of Fort Dodge and Roosevelt on Monday night. And with your Friday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. 
Thank you, Mark. And now let's go to Brady with your forecast. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Weather today is brought to you by Confluence Brewing. Learn more at confluencebrewing.com for today. Looking at those sunny skies and a high near 87 tonight. Partly cloudy conditions, a low around 71. And then moving into your weekend on Saturday, sunny skies, high near 92. Those heat index values as high as 100 degrees. Currently in Des Moines, 69. Ames and Marshalltown, 67. And Fairfield at 66 degrees. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, Matt. Hey, thanks, D- uh, uh, thanks, Brady. Uh, you know, I, I've just that forecast reminded <laughs> me that today is National French Fry Day. Mm. Emphasis on the fry. So you could, <laughs> since nobody in here is French, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. We <laughs> oui, we. Oui. I'm I'm definitely German, but from from both sides. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dutch Irish. My father was from Wales. Mm. Let's go to our saint of the day. <laughs> Name that this movie line. This is your saint of the day on Iowa Catholic Radio. Two men who proved that courage is not simply one of the virtues, but the form and shape of every virtue when tested. Saint John Jones and Saint John Wall were two English priests born nearly a century apart, but united in mission to keep Catholicism alive in England and minister to isolated Catholics in that country. John Jones lived during the reign of Elizabeth I, a time when holding onto power meant keeping a tight control of religious liberty. John was imprisoned twice for administering the sacraments, and after being released the second time, he fled the country. In exile at the age of 60, he joined the Franciscan order and secretly returned to England. He said mass for Catholics in the countryside before being imprisoned. Refusing to renounce his faith, John was hung, drawn, and quartered in 1598. John Wall was educated in Belgium and ordained in Rome, where he was where he entered the Franciscans. He traveled secretly to England and ministered to Catholics as well. An anti-Catholic reactionary began spreading a rumor that Catholics had a plot to murder the king and restore Catholicism as the state religion. Parliament acted and legally expelled Catholics from the country. John was rounded up and executed after a year in prison in 1679. Today we ask we ask Saints John Jones and John Wall to pray for us. Let's go now to Gene Till, host of Making It Personal, along with Bishop William Johnson from the Diocese of Des Moines. Good morning, Gene. Good morning. And what do we have to look forward to this weekend on The Bishop Show? We have Father Mike Mahoney joining us, our, one of our newly ordained priests, and, and we haven't had him on before because he's been studying over in Rome. So it was great to get to know him and and visit about his his formation, his his call to the priesthood, his formation, and and now his new assignment at Saint Teresa. So we're very excited to have him at my parish. Very good. And did how, did you know uh, now, Father Mike, while he was in seminary before before his ordination? Only through the Sarah Club. Okay. Um, I hadn't known him um, prior to that, but but had gotten to know him through the Sarah Club and the various events that we have for. Um, for the seminarians while they're in formation. And so, you know, you get to know him a little bit, but uh, looking forward to having him now at our parish. And and what a delightful, delightful young man. So I'm very excited to to be able to share this interview tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., and then Sunday at 11 a.m. Very good, thank you, Gene. And the reason my question was I asked is because I was wondering if, if how how ordination changed him. <laughs> but uh, well, we can find out today. He's going to be our speaker at Man Up as well at St. Francis That's in right. Assisi. So, uh, thank you, Gene. We'll uh, talk to you again next week. Okay. God bless. God bless you. As mentioned, at 12 noon today, St. Francis of Assisi in West Des Moines, Father Mike Mahoney will uh, be our Man Up West Power Lunch speaker, lunch provided by Chick-fil-A or Bring Your Own. And if uh, you're not able to make that event, be sure to tune in to Making a Personal with Bishop Jones in tomorrow morning at 8 and Sunday at 11 o'clock. Let's go now to uh, our diocesan minute. And on the other side of a break, we'll have Coach Andre Meeks for our Dowling Catholic High School Spotlight next. You're listening to The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Happy Friday. I'm Anne Marie Cox with your news from the Diocese of Des Moines. Happy birthday to Deacon Tony Valdez. Deacon Tony serves the Christ the King Parish community and all of our listeners here on Iowa Catholic Radio as he works his magic on the technology here. Mark your calendar. In two weeks, Father John Ludwig and Father Steve Orr will celebrate their 50th anniversary of ordination to the priesthood. Friends since childhood, they're celebrating together with a joint open house on 
Sunday, July 28th from 2 to 4 o'clock with evening prayer at 4. This will be at Our Lady's Immaculate Heart Parish in Ankeny. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to The Catholic Mirror, your source of local Catholic information and inspiration. You won't find out what's happening in our diocesan faith family anywhere else than The Catholic Mirror. We make the news available both in print and online. Help us continue to cultivate connections in Christ by supporting The Catholic Mirror. That's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines. I'm Anne Marie Cox. Have you downloaded the Iowa Catholic Radio app? It's easy through the Apple App Store on iPhone or through Google Play on Android. Search Iowa Catholic Radio and download the app. You can listen to Iowa Catholic Radio Talk or Iowa Catholic Radio Music. Listening to Iowa Catholic Radio is easy. Support for programming provided by Modus Maryland, offering a wide selection of clothing for a baptism, first communion, quinceanera, wedding, or any special occasion, as well as accessories and jewelry. 4120 Southeast 14th Street in Des Moines and online modusmaryland.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from A New Look Exteriors, an Anderson certified contractor providing custom window installations, roofing, siding, gutters, concrete, and more to help give your home a new look. Learn more at anewlookexteriors.com. Join me, Father Mike Mahoney, at the Next Man Up West Power Lunch Friday at St. Francis of Assisi in West Des Moines. I'll be sharing my journey to being a newly ordained priest for the Diocese of Des Moines. The program begins at noon and lunch provided by Chick-fil-A, iowacatholicradio.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. The Iowa Catholic Radio Network presents the Dowling Catholic High School Activity Spotlight, a monthly spotlight on a member of the Dowling Catholic High School community that is a witness to the very best of faith, academics, and student activities. Sponsored by Brightside Aesthetics, by Discharm Dermatology, and Clive, offering a wide range of aesthetic and wellness services and providing customized care to have you looking your best. Learn more at brightsideiowa.com. And when we uh, put put together the, the plan for this segment, the intention was always to have uh, you know a broad section of uh, representatives from the Dallin Catholic High School community. So far, we've featured only students welcoming into uh, the studio for, for the first time a teacher from Dallin Catholic High School. Not just any teacher. But this past year's Teacher of the Year is that right, Coach Andre Meeks? Welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's 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 a lot of pressure. You said there was not going to be any pressure. Here. It started off right off the bat, <laughs> Co- Coach. I have no problem. You can, I, I have no doubt you can handle it. You, you've, uh, you've prepared for championship <laughs> games. You've uh, prepared for uh, uh, some big things in life. This this is going to be nothing. It's going to be over before we know it. <laughs> oh my good. Thank you for having me. It's a it's a blessing when I got uh, received the call from Holly. You know, I was I was so surprised, but uh, you know, after this morning, just listening to the voice of Mark Armadale again, yeah, he, he chirping in the background, I can hear him laughing. So this is this is good. Thank you, and I, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, thanks for making time for it because you know I think you know we put out a little uh, questionnaire that you fill out, and and but I and even before I got all the way through it, I, I, my immediate reaction: this is a man who knows his passion and his purpose, and he loves what he does. Where where does where does that come from? Well, uh, a young uh, a lady named Virginia Meeks, mm-hmm. <laughs> my mom. No, that's okay, good. <laughs> so that's where it starts, and uh, it builds from there. Uh, but uh, it's it's been a long process to get there, uh, understanding what what is the the passion, the burn, and what makes what makes a difference. What's the real calling for life? And mm-hmm. so this is this is you're right. This is it right here. And uh, when did you know that uh, you you were called, or, or that your vocation was going to be uh, a, a coach and teacher of uh, of high school students? Well, that I, I the turning, you know, we go to college and we say, what are we going to do when we don't know? Mm-hmm. Uh, a coach and teacher mentor of mine, Tom Gersh, back at uh, Columbus High School, said, "Hey, why don't you come out and help us out coaching?" Mm-hmm. And I knew him. And I knew what it was that as soon as I did it and I felt it, I knew that was it. And that's it. It went from there. It built from that point on at about the age of 21. Now, you a little buck the trend a little bit because this last weekend in the gospel, we heard a prophet is not so always welcomed in his hometown, right? <laughs> but, you, but you graduated from Waterloo Columbus High School, right? Yes. yes. And, and then and returned there to coach. And th- then talk about that journey there as, as a coach there that then ultimately led you to Dallin Catholic High School. Uh, it, it, again, Tom Gersh was a key a catalyst in that, bring me, helped me volunteering that first year and that first year was like just uh, getting your feet well tra- trying to figure out what it is what's going on what do I do how do I do this and then 
it, uh, it and then it, the next year, you know, I come back in and they say, um, well, you, we're going to move you to the sophomore staff. Mm-hmm. Okay. I said, great. Awesome. One of our longtime coaches had left there. And then the next thing I know, a month later, before the season starts and a month before the season, uh, the head coach, Rick Hendry said, uh, our other coach left too. So now you're going to be the head coach. And it went, it happened just that fast from wow. in, in that stage. And then it, it was, a, it's been a blessing, a journey to get to this point. Uh, and then, you know, through the process, I believe it's family, it's, it's, it's faith and it's the connections, mm-hmm. the connections you make. Um, and through those connections, uh, through Dowling Catholic High School, through football, through the process of being uh, uh, involved in that community, I was able to meet Tom Wilson. Mm-hmm. Uh, we became friends. And so through that process of meeting him uh, led me to this point here at Dow- at, at, to Dowling. Right. Uh, it's been uh, going on the 11th, 11th year uh, here. So it's and, and Catholic education has been a part of who I am. And, you know, I, I don't know if this is going to be one of those questions you might ask but you know go, go, go people with always it. ask well, yeah. how'd you get to how'd you get into catholic education well uh virginia meeks again mm-hmm. <laughs> i go back to the start and i i'm the youngest of nine and so the story is i'm the youngest of nine the baby of the family everybody else is going to public schools but somehow in that fifth grade area area she said you're going to go to a catholic school i don't know i still don't know this day if i was in trouble as i needed more discipline what did she see <laughs> But her wisdom put me there. Yeah. And it's been that way since then. And so you converted to the Catholic faith, yes. right? Yes. Uh, w- when, did, uh, when did that happen? Uh, it happened uh, after my uh, uh, 20, uh, right around 21. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And was that, uh, you, you, is that the result of your wife, or was there a certain, a certain uh, I guess, a tug at your heart that said, well, uh, you know, said this, I, this is a place for Andre? When we were moving into that phase of, of and I again, I'm at, back at Columbus, and that's what we're doing. And I'm, faith has been always been the, the cornerstone mm-hmm. of what what it is, what we do, and how I do it. Um, so through that process, and yeah, meeting my wife and her family, uh, high school sweet, sweethearts as well, uh, Sarah, and uh, so we knew we wanted to raise our kids in the Catholic faith as well. So it, it was it was part of the whole the whole, whole package, the whole, whole the whole thing. You know, is uh, many different parts that came together. Uh, and so with that, uh, did you ever imagine that you'd be uh, teaching religion class or uh, the, the sacraments no. I- in Catholic education, right? <laughs> no, a, I cannot. Start, isn't it funny how the Lord works? <laughs> isn't it funny you how the Lord You start out volunteering as a football coach, and yeah. the next thing you know, you're, uh, you're, you're coaching uh, how, how we live out our faith. Yes, and, that, and you know, that's one of the things that's kept me into uh, uh, Catholic faith and Catholic education. I can share my faith mm-hmm. openly. That's been a huge part of it. I don't have to worry about anything. I, these kids understand, and and it's a community of believers, and so faith has been important. Talk about how special it is it uh, to, to be able to be a part of the community there at Dallin Catholic High School. Oh, very. Uh, there's, you know, you know, you mentioned the fact that, you know, how did, did I ever uh, think about t- teaching religion? Well, no, uh, it, that that wasn't the the fact. But there's there's a person, Matt Mandarin, our principal, all of a sudden says, "Hey, would you? Th- we have a." And again, it kind of went from there. I knew him through the coaching fraternity and, and had, had met him. Uh, he said, I heard your speech and I knew faith was important to you. And that's why this. And so, again, the Lord moving and making things happen. And that's the journey. You've got a, a nice list of, of, of accomplishments here. What, what, what stands out to you as, uh, what, you, as you reflect on, uh, you know, obviously you have years ahead, but, but mm-hmm. from at this point in time in your life, what, what is the thing that sort of stands out as the thing that uh, you feel mo- most blessed by in, in those accomplishments? Oh, boy. There's a lot. Well, I better, I better start with my family. I better start with my, my, my children. Yeah, I probably, should, I probably should have prepped you for that <laughs> one. <laughs> I better get that. You know, Alexia and uh, Lena and Avery, mm-hmm. and the, you know, the three gifts from God. And so I got to start there in the, in the, in the faith. But in the accomplishments, uh, oh, man, there's so many, but Having, I guess, the most recent one, the reason probably why I, I was yeah. brought here is, you know, the, the, to be nominated by the, the class of 2024 yes. as Outstanding Educator of the Year. And so uh, having that group of, 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 of students two years ago mm-hmm. as a sophomores, because I teach uh, sacraments oh, wow. in ecclesiology. 
So you, so, you, you didn't even have them. I, I didn't know. I didn't have wow. them. I've had hadn't had them, and so that knowing the, the impact. Yes, that is that is uh, that is really saying something, right? Because it's 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 been two years plus since you've maybe had uh, had them in the classroom. Yes. Yet you you still become the uh, have been the, the the focal point or the person they wanted to recognize as, uh, as someone who's been impactful in their life. Right. Yeah. Uh, what what, does, uh, what does the future look like for for Andre Meeks? What uh, uh-huh. do, do you have? Uh, do you have things still out there you want to uh, try to aspire to? You ever do you have a desire to get back into head coaching? And I got I got a, a, a thought in around that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, it, it's always in there because that's that's been a part of who who have been, and you you always work to that point. But yeah. I enjoy doing what I'm doing, right? And so people ask about retirement and those type of things as you, oh no, but as you get mature in the in in our ages and that type of thing. But I can't see retirement. Yeah, I love doing what I'm doing. So there's there's clearly plenty of tread left on the tire. I, it's, uh, I, I believe so. I hope so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, they, you know, they they gave me another contract, so I hope that that it's still good. means that something left on the table. <laughs> well, if, if I know anything about, uh, and I won't profess to know Coach Wilson well, right? But uh, but I think the uh, part of the success is he's surrounded himself with good men, mm-hmm. uh, men of character, men of virtue. And uh, if you didn't aspire to have that that that, that desire to to lead and be a head coach, right. I, I think then uh, then there's a little bit of a lost a lost opportunity there. But he's going to do his best to keep you around and, uh, <laughs> and and leading the program there. How's it looking going yeah. into next fall? Real quick, we got just about a minute. Oh, it looks you know the kids are working really hard. Yeah. this summer and you're right because you're in charge of the weight room, right? Yeah, well, we got weight room, we got speed and agility, we got all these things going on. So we're everybody. All the coaches, you know, that's the environment that's been created. But yeah. Tom's the leader of the our athletics, the environment, all coaches from all sports are involved in our summer program and our off season. So it's it's a great group of people that he's put around him yeah. to make this program the best it can be. And, and, and the football staff is second to none. I mean, right. they're a great. I mean, you know, this morning, you know, the text thread was already moving. So it's 24 7 on, on, on the guys connecting with each other in connection and faith. And, and making sure the kids are, are always uh, treated well. Coach, thank you so much for your witness of faith, for uh, coming in today and sharing a little bit of that with us, as well as your dedication to the students there at Dowling Catholic High School. Best of luck to you in the future. We'll talk to you again. Thank you. Appreciate thank you to Brightside Aesthetics by Ducharme Dermatology for our sponsoring our Iowa Catholic Network. Uh, Community Spotlight, uh, Activity Spotlight for Dowling Catholic High School. Folks, let's uh, just close with the glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thanks for being with us this all week long. John Leonetti will be back with you on Monday. We'll have Jesse Weiler in studio, or uh, uh, as a guest, as well as Claudia Cangilla McAdam. You'll be sure to tune in. Folks, have a blessed weekend. And be confident in Christ's mercy and his love today. The Catholic Morning Show is a production of the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. To hear this and other programs, visit iowacatholicradio.com or download the Iowa Catholic Radio app.